I've been meaning to cover this topic for some time, but the topics are never ending. And I'm glad I waited because I stumbled across an interview with uh, physician Dr. Casey Means discussing the very same topic. So why not meld her perspective with the science that I expected to cover anyway? So what is one simple thing, the simplest of things that will begin your metabolically healthy life? Let's listen in. Let's talk about a few of these things that can improve um, glucose disposal mm -hmm. um, and mitochondrial function, uh, mitophagy, the removal of, of dead or dysfunctional mitochondria so they can be replaced. Um, let's talk about the walking one first. Yeah. You said 7,000 steps a day. I don't track my steps. Mm. Um, what are we really talking about there? We're talking about taking the stairs and trying to walk as much as possible. Maybe we, like, if we were going to just give a, like, a really crude prescription. You're a doctor, so you can prescribe things. Yes. Um, what would you tell people to do? Like how many short walks per day? Is, is it like three? Is it five? Is it, um, what are we talking? I would say, up, I mean, at least three. I would say aiming for more than that is good though. There's so, so to sort of just give a sense of the picture of walking, if walking were a pill, it would be the most uh, impactful pill we've ever had in all of modern medicine. Okay, that's quite a statement. I don't think I disagree, but uh, I need to reflect on that just a bit. Anyway, why is walking such a potent driver of health? Um, there was a paper in JAMA, uh, 6,300 participants followed for uh, 10 to 11 years. And the people who simply walked 7,000 steps per day compared to less than that had an up to 70% lower risk of all-cause mortality in the follow-up period. So not Amazing. causality, but it's, it's pretty incredible. Okay. One thing I appreciate about Dr. Huberman's podcast is that he adds the references to studies mentioned. So I was able to find the studies that Dr. Means references. Uh, she mentions that people who walk 7,000 steps per day have a 70% reduced risk of all-cause mortality. And she's absolutely right. We can see that here. On the left, we have three buckets of step count, less than 7,000, between 7 and 10,000, and over 10,000. On the right, we have different models. These models represent statistical adjustments to the data to account for possible confounding variables. For example, maybe walkers just happen to be skinnier, and that's the real reason that mortality was reduced. So the researchers account for weight. They accounted for a lot of things. I'll offer a list. If we look at the uh, most adjusted model, Model 3, the researchers identify a 72% reduced mortality risk compared to people who walk less than 7,000 steps. Now, I should caution here because one problem with these buckets is that they're a bit crude in what they measure. For example, the majority of people in the 7 to 10,000 step group could be hitting 9,000 steps and those in the sub 7,000 could be on the extreme toward 1,000 steps. We don't have that granularity. The reason I mention that is because we don't necessarily, it, this doesn't actually tell us if it's exactly 7,000 steps that lead to this protective effect. We only know that it's somewhere between seven and 10,000 steps. Either way, the overall point stands. Walking every day is a huge benefit. We'll get into why in a few minutes. They've done follow-up research with slightly different numbers showing Again, though, like many thousands of people uh, in the study followed for about 10 years, 8,000 to 12,000 steps per day was associated with 50 to 65 percent lower uh, all-cause mortality. And this has been played out in many studies showing about a 50 percent reduction in Alzheimer's, uh, dementia, obesity, type 2 diabetes, depression, cancer, gastric reflux, just all across the board. Again, quite a punch. I love it. So Dr. Means references another study, yet unfortunately, I couldn't track that study down because the one posted was not the one that she's describing. It doesn't matter much though, because her point is well taken. And in fact, let me take the opportunity to point out an interesting datum from another study. Interestingly, according to this study, the researchers identify that the walking benefit is most pronounced for people over the age of 65 and much less potent for people under 65. We can see that the datum here indicates that if a person walks 8,000 steps between three and seven times per week, they're associated with significantly reduced mortality risk compared to those who don't achieve 8,000 even once a week. This analysis 
was also adjusted, much like the previous study. Okay, let's get into some of the juicy physiology. And I think the key thing is that it's not about the steps. It's about the fact that muscle contraction is medicine. When we contract our muscles, even in a very like low grade way, like walking or doing a couple air squats, you know, we're activating AMPK and we are essentially causing that cell to have a stimulus to push glucose channels to the cell membrane. Most of the time, the glucose channels are like in vesicles, inside, in little bags inside the cells. They're not on the cell membrane. So of course, that's going to keep the, the glucose in your, in your bloodstream not being processed by the mitochondria. So when we think about steps, it's a proxy metric for just moving more throughout the day. There's a lot of good information here. Okay, so the main point that we shouldn't focus too much on the steps themselves, but more so on the general sentiment of increasing physical activity as a whole. Not even necessarily dedicated activity. It can be as simple as just getting up from your chair every 15 to 30 minutes and walking down a hallway and back. Now, in terms of the physiology, she's spot on. Movement requires your muscle cells, millions of them, to contract. That contraction requires energy, and energy is supplied in the form of fat molecules and glucose molecules. Now, Dr. Means focuses on glucose entry into the muscle cells through the activation of a transport protein called GLUT. Essentially, as described in this study, when the energy levels are reduced within the muscle cell, a master protein called AMPK is activated. When activated, it stimulates the movement of glute proteins to the surface of the cell, where they embed themselves into the cell membrane. In doing so, more channels, more openings exist for glucose to enter from the blood into the cell. And eventually, they get delivered to mitochondria for energy generation. If this happens many times a day and over many years, the net effect is a better metabolic health, lower blood sugar, better muscle tone, and more that we don't have time to get into. This is further corroborated and re-illustrated in this review. You can see the uh, glucose molecule moving from the blood to the liquid between the blood and the muscle cell. That's noted as the myocyte. And if the glute protein is already on the cell membrane, it allows glucose into the cell, which ultimately goes through a metabolic pathway known as glycolysis and eventually ends up at the mitochondrion, at least in this scenario. So Dr. Casey is, as I mentioned, spot on. So what are the takeaways here? Before we get to that, there's also some data on step intensity, as in how quickly you walk, and the relationship to mortality, as well as some other nuances that come from these two studies that we just went over. If you're so inclined, I'm uh, covering more on this topic in the extended version of this video, which is found along with all my investigations on your health, including applicable takeaways, in my premium research review called The Physionic Insiders. It's found in the uh, description box if you're interested. I'd love to have you aboard. Okay, the takeaways here are pretty simple, but we'll add some numbers to it for the number hungry folks out there. The big takeaway is that walking is a major move, pun not intended, <laughs> in improving your metabolic health and protecting yourself against all-cause mortality. But you don't have to be rigid with it. You can also make sure just to move. If that's a short walk down a hallway at work every 30 minutes or a few body weight squats or whatever you see fit, for those more number-based, we don't actually have 100% foolproof exact numbers, but based on what we have, it seems safe that the majority of the benefit comes in around 8,000 steps per day. So if you want a target, there it is. I cover the impact uh, using weighted vests while walking has on your health, including a very cool mechanism related to your bones right here. Or if 8,000 steps isn't enough for you, how about taking it up a few notches right here? Check this out. I'll catch you over there. Bye.